All right, we're back here at Progressive Field with the Indians on top, one to nothing. Going to the top of the third, Matt Underwood, Rick Manning with you, and joined now by Indians alumni ambassador Corey Snyder. Welcome. Thanks, good, good you, to man. be here. How yeah, you doing? Good. Real good, real good. Former power hitter, you had to like that home run swing from Carlos Santana. Huh? Very nice, yeah, yeah. He's got some pop there a little bit, yeah. Needs a few more RBIs, but other than that, he's okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. You've been following. <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah. he has. Right. Uh -huh. Scotty yeah. was up here last night talking about. It. He said when you two went out to throw out the first pitch, it was they were sitting so close together down there, you weren't sure. Oh, you could so get close! In. <laughs> he goes, just don't didn't hurt anybody. <laughs> exactly. Now you had a tremendous throwing arm. In addition to being a great power hitter, you had a throwing arm that was second to none. I think in the outfield during your time did. How did you how did you get better? I mean, how did you harness that ability to throw? Me and Joe Carter long toss every day. Yeah. We used to throw foul pole to foul pole, I mean, every day just to get it strong, keep it loose. And uh, it was just, you know, I took pride in throwing people out. That's what it was all about. And I enjoyed, uh, you know, doing that part of it, helping that pitcher out and throw somebody out and get him to stop at second base instead of going first to third. Yeah, not many people throw like they used to. You know, you used no. to see a lot better arms back in the, uh, you know, the old days than now. It's different when you see somebody, they stand out like oh, a sore thumb, oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Big time. It's good to see guys that, you know, really take pride in that part of their game and, uh, and work hard at it. Minnesota has a rookie, Rosario, that has 16 assists. Hey, yeah, nice. and he's played in left field and both right field. He's a rookie. You're going to see a lot of him in the near future. Oh, you good. Keep an That'd eye be good on to him. See. Because you're what? You're coaching now. You're the batting coach in the Seattle organization for AAA, yeah. uh -huh. right? Yep. So tell us how your year went. You know, it went good. We got, uh, I think I got about six or seven guys in the big leagues this year. So it's, I mean, it's a good and a bad of it. You yeah. know, you're not going to do, you know, real well in AAA just because when the guys go going really good, they take them to the big leagues, and then you got to. <laughs> well, that's a goal. I mean, you know, they want they're just on their stop, hopefully, and exactly. head to the big leagues. Exactly. I mean, you got a new crop of guys you got to break in. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I mean, that's it's a fun thing for me, just because you know we just it kind of brings back the memories of when we got that call. Yeah. And we got to bring them in the you know office and say, hey, you know, we going to the big leagues, and you know, you get high fives, you get hugs, you get people crying. Yeah, it, right. Uh, I mean, you kind of get a little bit of every, everything of it. But it's, I mean, it, it's an exciting thing for us because, I mean, that's what we work for. Work to get them there, you know, mentally prepared and, and physically prepared to, to play in the big leagues. And it's, it's neat to see. How much, uh, when you're the hitting instructor, do you go to the video and do the hitters look at it in AAA? Oh, a lot. It's, yeah, they video everything. Every, everything so everything, everything yeah. is just like the big leagues. They oh, take yeah. everything uh, as they would at the big they league level. It, just, it teaches them, you know, I think the biggest thing is video is teaching them what to look at. Because they just go in and look at the bad things. Right. You know, what did I do wrong? How come I didn't get a hit? Why didn't I do this? Instead of, you know, how did the guy get you out? Right. What did he throw you? You know, I mean, seeing, uh, ru seeing routines, seeing what they're trying to do, and they kind of go in there and look at the at the wrong things but get them used to uh, to doing it right. That's the key is the, what, what to look for. I mean, you can look at a video all day long, but if you don't look at the, the right part of what, the, you know, how the guy's getting you out, how are you going to make the adjustment? Oh, exactly. That's, that's the key. And it's just, you know, at that level, you know, it's just minor adjustments, not any overhauls. And it's understanding that process is we're in AAA. You know what? Physically, they can play in the big leagues. Yeah. It's just making them smarter. You know how to, you know how, how to look at guys, and you know when the guy's in scoring position, what's what's going on when he gets into this count, what's he going to probably throw you in, and understanding that process of, it's just you know it's a numbers game, but it's understanding you know what every pitcher falls into a groove and he falls into a routine, and that's just, that's what it is. Yeah. Patterns are big, yeah. Corey, with the facilities now that every big league club has, with that most minor league clubs have now, talking about hitting cages. You know, T areas to do soft toss work, uh, the video that's available for not only big league players but minor league players as well. Why do you think offense is down across the board in baseball right now? You know, I think the pitchers are getting better. I mean, the the velocity is up. They they have they can all command when they get the big leagues. They're commanding three pitches. You know what I mean? And, and it's just uh, it's amazing. And I think. My opinion, I think this, you know, the cybergenic, you know, all that stuff, you know, taking pitches, getting behind, pitch counts, all kind of stuff, it just, I think it hurts guys. I mean, if, if you're a big league pitcher and you give him one strike down the middle, right. now you're on one. Yeah, exactly. And now he makes you chase one. 
Now you're 0 2. He has to throw one quality pitch and you're out. Yeah. So it's like, you know what? I mean, I, I try to teach my guys put pressure on the pitcher. Doesn't matter if it's 0 1 0, 2 0, even 3 0. You know what? Take a swing yeah. at it because if he feels like, you know what, they're going to swing at any count, he's going to start right. picking, and then you're going to, I guarantee you're going to have more walks. You're going to get yourself in better counts. I mean, it's just the way it is. But they're just they're too good to give them an easy fastball strike these days. Nothing wrong with getting aggressive, seeing that first fastball, and get after it. So, yeah. Exactly. Oh, well, if you me... hit it and put it in play, fine. If you make it out, that's fine, too, as long as you're swing at the pitch you're looking at. Ex if you're looking for a fastball, then you don't swing at the breaking ball, right? right? You exactly. take it. That's and if he throws exactly. a strike, it's okay. You're still alive. Exactly. Exactly. You know what's fun to watch is the Royals. Yeah, they're aggressive. They Very are aggressive. aggressive. It's yeah. a, they're not taking, you know, if you throw me a fastball, I'm swinging at it. And yeah. it just, you know, it's like you talk to guys. I mean, I do averages all, all the time. You know, 3-0 pitches, I think you hit like 380 when they swing a 3-0 pitch. But big leaguers only three swing, not, not, like, I think it's like 9.7% of the time. A lot of guys don't like to swing at like, it that well, Yeah. I go, why don't you swing? Well, I don't want to get out. Well, that's just negative. Yeah, what, what if you right. hit a double off the wall? Yeah. Well, that's what you need. <laughs> you you, you <laughs> need a couple yeah. of. Who did we talk to said, uh, when it's 3-0, and I tell myself it's 2-1. and That was Cal Ripken. Wasn't it? Yeah, was that who it was? I think it was. That's a pretty good guy. Well, he said he didn't that's... like swinging at a 3-0 pitch. That's right. Because so I tell myself he said he'd was... always see. Yeah. I, I'd tell myself it's 2-0. and And he ended up swinging at it. Doing well. I said, well, I always go up in every pitch and say it's 2-0. <laughs> <I'm, I'm laughs> <just saying>, exactly. <laughs> I'm telling you, if you could do that. I mean, when you're almost guaranteed, here comes a little BP fastball at 90 miles an hour, mm. and it's coming. You know it's coming. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. People don't realize hitting, you're failing. You can succeed into hitting, and you fail 70% of the time, and you can yeah. be a very successful hitter. So most of it is mental. You have got to reprogram oh. your mind every time you go up there. And that's the toughest thing about the daily grind of baseball is trying to stay positive and, you know, healthy, and you're into it every step of the way. It's hard to do. By oh, the way, guaranteed. guys, the last five outs for Corey Kluber have all been via the strikeout. Now, when you were coming up, Corey, in 1986, was the strikeout still, did it still have the uh, the sort of negative connotation? Oh, guaranteed back then. Oh, yeah. They, they were big on, you know, striking out, not striking out. You have too many strikeouts. Now it, it doesn't really matter these days. Right. I mean, they don't really look at it. What's it's your, just kind of one What's of those your thought on that? Because um, we were saying if you're a power hitter like yourself, we don't want you to have a two-strike approach, you know. Oh, exactly. But there are a lot of guys, Rick said, you know, if you're a, if you're a middle infielder, if you're a little guy, you, you you need to put the ball in play more often. Oh, guaranteed. I mean, I'm I'm for that. I mean, I'm one of those guys. You know, when you're ahead in the counts, early early in the count, early in the game, even to the sixth inning. You know what? Take a hack at it. Go get it. I mean, to be honest, I mean, I wish I had a two strike approach back then. And my my two strike approach is I'm gonna take the same swing. I'm just gonna shift the field because yeah. they're trying to get me out 80 percent of the time away. Uh huh. So you know what? I can still drive the ball to the ballpark right center. You know, and the big guys, let's let's do it. You know, you got your number one, two, you know, you know, eight, nine hitters. You know what? Choke up a little bit or wide out. Do something just to keep your swing shorter and put the ball in play because you got to get on, you know, on base. They're let the, the big guys setters. bring in. Yeah. Right. They're the exactly. table setters. You know, you have, if you have three power hitters in that lineup, you're, it's, a, it's a good team. You know? Oh, yeah. I mean, legitimate power hitters. That's a great team. You look at the, like, let's. All right, out of the clear blue, let's go to Toronto. You, when you got Bautista and Carnacion and, and Donaldson. Donaldson. Those, the other guys just get on base. Those guys hit home runs because pitchers got to challenge those guys. Wow, exactly. Corey Kluber is carving them up. The last six outs, all via the strikeout. He whiffs the side here in the third. One-nothing Indians. We'll continue with Corey right after this. 